let's get started. There's many ways you could build this. You could use a grid if you want, but I'm going to use Flexbox within my containers because that's something a lot of people are still kind of getting used to. And I want to just demonstrate again what you can do with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop in a container like this. And this very first container, I am going to go and give in a little bit of margin from the top, just so it's easier for us to see. So we've got a bit of white space. Maybe you drop in your logo, your menu and anything like that. We're just focusing on the contents at the moment. Now into this container, I'm going to be very prescriptive and my layout is going to be 1140 as default. And I'm going to go to my advanced tab and I'm going to say, give me 20 padding on the right and left. The reason I'm doing that is so that regardless of whether you're on the desktop, the tablet or the mobile or anything in between, you've always got this 20 pixel buffer on your left and right. Then into this container, I'm going to drop in three other containers. So I'm going to go container and then I'm going to now duplicate and duplicate again. So I have a parent container and I have three child containers. I don't want them to be positioned like that. I actually want them to be side by side. So let's go back to our parent container first of all. Everything is zeroed out except the top margin at the top. I'm okay with that. My child container, however, I'm gonna zero everything out there as well. And I'm then just gonna copy that and I'm gonna paste the style over. I could, if I want, just go in and zero out the margin and padding, but I'm just copying it over. Then I'm going to go to my parent container and I'm going to go to the layout and I'm now going to set this to be a row. So now you can see they are now side by side before they were stacked in the default column vertical format. I'm going to go over to my first container and I am going to say that the width of this is going to be a 540. So I've already done some mathematics where I've said if my estate is 1140, and I've got 20 on the left and 20 on the right, I'm left with 1,100. If you split that down the middle, 1,100 divided by two becomes 550. But I've said I'm gonna have 540. That's because I'm gonna start accounting for 20 pixel gap in between. The first thing I'm gonna do is set my width to be 540. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna go over here and start typing in 540. That's not what you wanna do. What you want to do is set your child container to be full width and then you set it to be 540. Now you will notice as soon as I do that, that's no way 540. And the only reason it's done that is because we haven't set the size for the other two. So this is going to be a 540, but while I'm here, I'm also going to set this to be a 540 in height. I want to have the perfect square, but of course you're going to say that is a rectangle. Don't worry. Let's go to the second container. Make sure that is full width as well set the pixel and this one is going to be 260. Again, I've done my calculations to work out what sizes I want. The, this is going to be a 540 in height, so 260 wide by 540. I'm now going to go to my third container, again full width, set that to be a pixel. This will be a 260 and a 540 as well. And as soon as I adjust that, can you now see we have the perfect square? And we've got one that is half a square, but it is the same height as well. Now, at the moment, everything is kind of sitting perfectly, but we don't have any gap between them. So because I've already accounted for the gap in my calculations, I'm now going to go to my parent container. I'm going to go to where I have column and I'm now going to just put in a 20 there. And if I was to measure this, that is a perfect 1100. We've got 540 plus 20. Well, look, do the mathematics, right? 540 plus 260 plus 260 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 plus 20 equals 1140. If you take the time to plan out your layouts, this is so simple and easy to do, okay? It's just, just a little bit of mathematics. Right, let's now start populating. We This is not gonna take long at all, I can assure you. We're gonna go over to our container and into here, I'm gonna drop in a heading and I'm also gonna drop in some text editor as well. I'm going to go to the child container that contains all of that and I'm going to align everything to be at the bottom. Look how simple and easy that was. I'm going to go to my text editor that has a bit of a gap. Um, Elemental always has a carriage return, which is a little bit annoying. I don't like that. You can drop in a bit of CSS code, but to keep things simple, I'm just going to go over to my text editor and I'm just going to reduce the bottom by 15 pixels. If you go to minus 20, it will be cutting it fine with how close you are to the letters, especially letters like Q, P, 
P, anything that Y, anything that overhangs downwards, underhangs, overhangs downwards, right? So minus 15 is pretty good. Let's now go and give our container a background image. We're going to go to style. We're going to go to background. I've set it to be no repeat and it's going to be a cover as well. And that's looking pretty okay. Yep, I know we can hardly make out the letters. So I'm going to go to my heading now and I'm going to change the content. It's already defaulted to my custom font, which is railway. And for the purpose of this tutorial, if you really want to understand more about performance, custom loading your fonts, WebP, performance plugins, please go and watch my other videos or sign up to our learnwebsquadron.co.uk course where we share a whole lot more. So let's first decide on what sizes we're going to go for. I'm going to go over to my heading and I'm going to set this to be REM rather than using pixel. And I'm going to kind of decide on well, what sizes are we going to do. If we go with a three, that's quite big. If we go with a two, that works a little bit better. So my biggest size on the desktop will be a two. What about when we get over to the mobile? So this is your mobile size and I'm not going to stretch it. I'm going to leave it as a 360. I think two REM is a little bit too, but you could get away with it, to be honest. You know, I do think you could get away with it. So maybe we just stick with a two REM or what if I decide I want to go with a 1.8 REM instead, something like that. So let's pretend we're going to scale from a two to a 1.8 REM. What we then do is go over to the link in the video description. And what we're going to do is add in a clamp calculation make sure your root HTML is set to 16 because that's kind of the standard for Elementor. Then I've set my minimum width to be 380 and my maximum to be 1100. Just go and type in your values. I then made sure that my units are set to be REM. There is a drop down box over here. Just pick pixel or REM, whatever you're working with. And I've said my smallest size is 1.8, but my biggest is 2. So that means that when you hit 1100 in terms of your width, it will never exceed 2 REM. And as you shrink your screen down, when you eventually get to 380, the smallest it can ever be is 1.8. It will not go smaller than that. So I've got my maximum and minimum threshold and the values there will scale now between 2 and 1.8. Once you've done that, go and copy over this formula. Then go back over to your page, make sure you remove any values that you have entered in the mo in the desktop, in the mobile. Make sure you've removed the values in the mobile, okay? Go to the desktop, go over to your typography. Again, remove the REM value you've got there. Go and hit the drop down and then pick the pen or the pencil and then pop in your formula. Get rid of the semicolon and the curly bracket at the end and then go to the start of your formula and get rid of everything before the word clamp. And you might look at it and go, well, I'm not really noticing anything different. That is now 2 REM. If I go to the mobile, that is now 1.8. Now, when it comes to the text editor, I'm going to be a little bit prescriptive. I'm not overly fussed about adding in any clamp here. So I'm just going to go and pick REM and I'm just going to go with a 1.2. And I'm actually OK with that, regardless of whether you are on the desktop, the tablet or the mobile. I'm going to go back to my container. And I'm going to add in a bit of spacing there because at the minute everything is set to zero, zero. And I'm going to say, give me about 10 uh, row gap between the heading and the text editor. Now, at the moment, there is a chance that they will fight for attention depending on the image. And they are very close to the left and the bottom border. So let's go and adjust that. Let's go to our heading first and give it a background color. Let's go to the advanced tab. Let's go to background, black color. And then I'm going to adjust it to be something like that. And I'm going to now take that value, which is actually a six. You know, you can you can copy it over or make a note of it or even add it as a global color as well inside Elemental. And then I'm going to go to my text editor and I'm going to do the same there. And as soon as you do that, you can now see that the row gap actually creates a bit of a problem because you have a gap. So I wanted to just illustrate to you how sometimes it's not a good idea to always have it defaulted in Elemental where you have 20 for your column and your row. I've now moved into the logic of having everything zeroed out, so I have full on control. So let's now go back and get rid of that gap. So everything is now next door to one another. Instead, what I'm going to do really, really simple and easy here is I'm going to go to my heading first and I'm going to go and add in a little bit of padding. I'm going to say give me five from the top, 20 from the left, and then from the bottom, I'm going to say just give me five. OK. And then I'm going to do something else on my right hand side. I'm actually going to say now give me 60 like that. So what I've now done is created like a gap over here because I don't I want to have something that looks a little bit different. 
Let's go to my text editor and let's replicate what we kind of done. So we're going to have five at the top, 20 on the right, five at the bottom and 20 on the left. So you can see what we've done. I've kind of moved things, you know, in a way by having the five at the bottom and the five at the top, I've created that 10 pixel gap that I was using in the container. So you get the idea. Now on the right hand side, again, I'm going to go and add in A60. So if we now view that, we have our title and a bit of an excerpt or something there, and we get this nice little pattern there. So you could have done this by dropping all of that into another grandchild container, then drop that into the container. But I'm just kind of illustrating how with a bit of, you know, creativity, you can get away with doing this as well. But how does this look on the mobile? So right now, that's what it looks like. And quite frankly, that 60 is just a little bit too big. So let's reduce it. I'm going to go with 30 instead. Now, you could argue the font size on here is looking a little bit big. Does it need to be smaller? And I would say, yep, yeah, why not? But then if you want to do that, you could either click into your text editor, go to your con uh, style, sorry, go to your typography and pop in a completely different value over here or go and pop in a clamp calculation. We're then going to go over here and I'm now going to say the smallest size on the mobile is a one. And on the desktop, we're going to have a 1.2. Go back over hit the pencil, paste it in, get rid of the semicolon and the curly bracket at the end and get rid of everything before the word clamp. And you can see what that's done now. If we now move over to the mobile, it looks a little bit smaller. The sizing is still fine in the line height. That works perfectly well. And it still looks okay with regards to the image. That is how simple and easy we've gone and done that. Now what we do next is we're actually going to be reusing a lot of what you see here in a very, very clever way. What we're going to do is go and add in an image into our third container, just a background image, nothing stylish or fancy. That's literally it. Center, center, and we've just dropped in an image. Into here, we're going to drop in a loop grid. I've got nine fake posts and we're going to have a particular layout. But into here, we're going to have a loop grid like I've just said. We're going to create a template and it's going to show two posts, the first two, and then we'll show some more later on. So let's now go over to our container number two and we're going to drop in a loop grid. Now you've got to make sure you've got all of this activated in your elemental features and you better make sure you've got elemental pro. If you haven't, this is not going to work for you very well. We are going to be touching the posts, not products, and we're not going to use a preset template. We're going to create one from scratch. So let's go and click, click, click. Click create template. First thing we're going to do is go and add in a container. Now, when you do that, things are not going to look perfectly well, and it can be difficult to work with it when the layout is narrowed down like that. Go and hit save and back. If you're working on a blank page, you won't have this problem. But when you're working with a narrow estate like I am, it just does not look well or good at all. Once you've done that, what you want to do is go back over to your container where you have your loop grid. And I'm now going to say this will be one column and I'm going to say only show me two items. So now can you see my container, the green? It stretches over. Now, before we go back into there to edit it, I'm going to go over to my container here and I'm actually going to copy that container just because it's already got loads of items in here because I'm going to reuse what we have here for our loop grid design. You could create it from scratch, but I'm just trying to speed things up for you. So we're going to go over to our loop grid and we're going to hit edit template. Into here, I'm going to paste the container we already had before. So what we have is container, heading and text editor. We're now going to modify that container because right now it's just ridiculous at the moment. I'm going to set this to be 260 in width. And I'm also going to set the height of it to be 260 as well. So I have my perfect square in a way. Then what I'm going to do is modify my heading and my text editor. So my heading at the moment is currently set to be a really ridiculously big size. I'm actually going to get rid of all of that. And I'm going to be very prescriptive. And I'm going to say I want this to be 1.2 on the desktop and the mobile. Don't care. That's all I want. And when I get to my text editor at the bottom, I'm actually going to get rid of that, all of the content. And instead, I'm going to go and add in a meta field. We will modify the text as well that we have here, but I want to do the text editor first, and then I'll come back to the title, and then I'll come back to the image. We're now going to pull through dynamic data, right? This is going to be a loop grid for our post. So I want to show the post image, the post title, and the post date. Okay, I don't want to type it in manually. 
So I'm going to go over to my text editor. I'm going to click the dynamic tag and over here it says post date. I'm going to click that and eventually the post date will come through. I don't quite like the format of that. So I'm going to click the spanner or the wrench. I'm going to go to format. I could pick something here. Instead, I'm going to go and click custom and I'm going to go with M and Y. And what you should get is Oct 2023. I'm going to go to my style. I don't want the clamp here either. Again, I'm going to get rid of it, go to my REM, and I'm now going to set this to be 0.9. And I want it to be 0.9, whether you are on the mobile or the tablet or anything. I'm, I don't care. I want you to be that size. Now I'm going to adjust my whips because at the moment we've got a 60 coming in. I'm going to change that to be a 30 and I'm going to ensure that we have a 30 for the date as well. So again, we're maintaining the look of what we had before but now it just works a little bit better in terms of the sizing. Now let's go back to our heading. At the moment, it's bringing forward the text I went and entered in, which I don't want. We go to content and instead of having that title come over, click on the dynamic tag and I'm now gonna go and click post title. That will now bring forward the very first post title that we've got or the post that's coming through. I'm now also gonna go and click the link because if you click that, where would it take you? We're going to go to the link and we're going to click dynamic tags. And then I'm going to click post URL. So when I hover over that, you can see the little gray URL pop up in the bottom left of my screen for where it would go. That would now go to the post, but we're not done yet. Let's go to the container, go to the style where we have the image, delete the image, go and hit the dynamic tag and then put featured image. And that will bring back the featured image for that particular post. Is the logic kicking in now for what we're doing? It should all make sense, but I'm not done. I want to add in a bit of a background overlay as well, just to make it clear that it's a post, for instance. Let's go and hit background overlay and we're on the container. We're going to go and pick one of our colors. We'll go for this one and I'm going to change the opacity for this to be about 0.25. And the reason I'm doing that is to kind of standardize the colors a bit because you could have loads of colors in your post. And if you're going for a particular branded look, if you've got like, let's say your branded look was yellow and then you got red, pink, you know, green, really bright turquoise blue coming out it starts to make things a little bit crazy. So I'm just adding in a bit of standardization before you get to the actual post. Let's go and check how it looks in the mobile. Pretty important to do that. And you can see here that this is currently occupying 100%, which is okay. What we do though have is a bit of a problem down here with the text editor where I can actually get rid of that negative 15 margin. And that is now looking pretty good too. Yes, I know that is right up against one another, but we're going to adjust that later on. Let's now hit save and back and straight away the second post comes through. When you're working, sometimes Elementor will show you more than one. But sometimes it doesn't. It's not the end of the world. Once you hit save and back, they will come through or you might need to go over to your loop grid and just make sure you're showing the correct number of items. But you will notice the gap over here looks a little bit big. I mean, this is 260 plus 260. And if you add 20 to that, that should take it to 540. And we go back to our container. That is what the height is. So why are we getting this extra gap? If you start messing around with all of these settings over here, you're never going to get it perfect. What you need to do is go to your loop grid and control it. It's putting in, even though it's blank, it's putting in more than 20 there, okay? Sometimes this is the things about Elemental, it forces through a value. So I'm going to say, Shay, make this gap not be more than 20. And can you see that? That is now perfectly 540 in height. And we have a 20 gap over here and we have a 20 gap on the row, which is what we've done. I've renamed my parent containers to be first C because we are going to duplicate. This is going to be pretty simple from this point onwards. I'm going to go over to my mobile, make sure I'm on the first C and over here for our row, we don't have any value. So I'm now going to go and set this to be 20. And what you'll now get is a 20 gap between all of my containers. Really simple and easy to do. And if we go back to the desktop, it still has 20 on the column. Simple and easy, right? Let's now duplicate the first C. So now we have two first C's and I'm going to call this second C. Pretty simple. Advanced tab. I'm going to make this be a 20 at the top. It's not too far. And what I'm now going to do is start to rearrange items. I'm going to get rid of this container over here. I'm going to duplicate the third container. So now we have a blog and we have two standardish containers. They've not got any text or words on them. I'm going to rearrange them. And then I'm going to go over to my container. 
this one over here. I'm going to set the width of this to now be 540 so you can see what it's doing. So we've got 260, 540, 260. We've got a 20 gap in between. I'm going to go to my loop grid. This is how quick and easy it is, okay? I'm now going to say give me two columns and set this to be four posts. Now, the plain and simple issue you can probably spot at the moment is that, number one, we've got a big gap over here. We're going to adjust that. And also, we're repeating the same post that we had above. Look, island hopping in Greece, island hopping in Greece. Let's sort everything out. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is just slightly modify my loop grid. I'm going to go back over to my content. We know it's a one and a two. I'm going to go over to my query and I'm going to set this to actually be in date ascending order because I put these posts in and I've realized now the images for this one work better in the order I'm going for. Go down to our second loop grid, which is down here at the moment. Again, I'm going to imitate what we've just done. Go over to our content, go to our query, make sure it's on posts. I'm going to set this to be in date ascending order. So again, we get the same image and we got the sunset strolls and Santorini over there. But then I'm going to go to exclude. And I'm now going to pop in offset two. And when you do that, it misses out the first two. Look, let me show you what happens if I do one. It misses out that picture of her doing that thing with her sunglasses. And Santorini now becomes post number one. You pop in a two and it skips them. So now it goes on to post three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to go to my style type. And now I'm just going to ensure that the column gap is also set to 20. Remember, even though it's blank, it starts to put in roughly about 30, I think it is there. So I'm going to say no, 20 and 20. And look at that, really quick and easy. We've now just gone and replicated. We've got our unique looking layout. Let's now go and change our images. Now, if you wanted to, you could go and add in some wording again. So I'm going to go and pick up my text editor and I'm going to drop it in over there. I'm going to click on my container, go to my layer, and I'm going to say move everything to be at the bottom. I'm going to click on the text editor, go to the advanced tab, and I'm going to say give me 30 from the right uh, margin. And we're just going to drop in a little bit of text over there, which you can now see. When we go to the mobile, everything is looking okay. And we scroll down, we've got our 20 gaps kicking in. Everything looks all right. You might decide that this is too big for the mobile. You could even hide it if you want. Just go over to your layout, adjust your height to be, I don't know, let's just go with a, a 280 there, something like that. So everything doesn't need to be massively, massively big. I mean, I could even argue that this image over here, do you need to have two images? And I would probably say it's a little bit of overkill. So it looks great on the desktop. But let's just get rid of it on the mobile. So if we now do that, that image is no longer there. But when you go over to the desktop, it is there. And everything still looks really, really cool. Let's now go and add in some further content. Now, this is where I'm going to duplicate our first container. So I'm going to go and duplicate that. I'm going to move it to the bottom. I'm going to rename it to be a third seat. Don't do what I'm doing. Give them proper names, please. I'm being a little bit you know, like at the moment, but you get the idea. Let's just scroll down so we know what we're playing with. We're going to get rid of this container that we currently have at the end there. I'm going to swap these two containers over. I'm going to make this container also be a 540. Can you see how everything is like lining up really, really nicely? Uh, got to go back to my third C and just change that to be 20 from the top. So we get that particular layout that we've got at the moment. I'm then going to go to my loop grid and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to change this to only give me one post uh, and one column at the moment. I'm then going to give the container a background color. Then I'm going to go to my loop grid and I'm going to edit it, but I'm going to be very careful here because if you edit this, it will affect all of the other loop grids because we're going to now give you a list of like all the blog posts. But rather than having an image, it's just going to have text. So what I'm going to do is just go over and I'm going to copy the container. I'm going to reuse the items, but I'm in a new loop grid. OK, this is important. If you modify this, it will modify it everywhere. So now that I've copied the container, you then hit save and back. Then you get rid of that loop grid because we've got to drop in a new one. So let's go and drop in a new one into here. You then hit create a template and it's going to say save. Yep, yeah, that's OK. And then into here, I will then paste. And now I have a new loop grid. It's exactly the same style, but all I've done is regurgitate what we did before. I'm going to go now and hit save and back. Again, I know this feels a little bit like you're going back, you're coming out, you're going in, but this just makes things easier. 
So now if I go over to my loop grid, this has got the same style, but I'm now going to set this to only be one column and I'm going to say, give me nine posts. Okay. So what's going to happen, it's going to get really elongated. Don't worry about that just yet. And then I'm going to go and edit the template. We're now going to go over to the container. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the background image. I don't want it. I'm also going to go to the background overlay and I'm going to clear that away as well. I don't need it because we've already got a background on the container. I'm going to go to my heading and I'm going to clear away that color as well. A lot of you are going to say, wouldn't it have been easy just to create this from scratch? Yeah, you could have done. But if you've already done a bit of the work in terms of styling or whatever, you can just regurgitate what you've got, right? Let's just make these all be darker in font. So I'm going to make them be a 222 in color. I will then go over to my loop, which is the name for this particular container, okay? And this at the moment is a particular height and a particular width. I'm going to get rid of all of those values, all right? I don't need to have them in. So now what you get is the title and the date, but the date is underneath. I want the date next door. Staying inside the container or the template, I'm going to go to my layout and set this to now be a row. And then I'm going to align everything to be at the start. In fact, that's the wrong order. <laughs> the text should be before. So now we get the text and we get the title. Let's go and modify that. Let's go to our text and we are now going to get rid of the right margin like that. In fact, we're going to get rid of the right padding as well. We may want to start adjusting what's happening with our content because at the moment they're not in line. So let's do two things to sort that out. Let's go over to our loop first and we are now going to align the item. So I'm going to hit center over here and now they should be in line. I mean, I would always say go and double check padding is five and five and the heading is five and five as well. Just go to your loop grid and then go, right, are you going to have 20 or you can have nothing? I mean, if you have nothing, it will be, you've got to put a zero in. Is that too small? Okay, do you want to go with a 10? It's up to you what you go for. And if you remember, this has already got the link added in as well. So when we created it over here, so when you click on the header, it'll take you to the post. So we now have a different looking loop grid. Your loop grid, your posts don't have to always be images. You can make a list as well. What we are going to do, though, is go and drop in a heading as well. So I'm going to drop one in like that. I'm going to pop it above the loop grid. I'm going to go to my advanced tab. I'm going to say, give me 20 from the left. And I'm also going to say, give me 20 from the top as well. Let's change the wording. I'm going to go with a 1.5 REM. I mean, I'm just going to make this be a little bit weightier, something like that. I mean, you could if you want. I mean, I would probably say add in a divider line as well. Let's make it be uh, 65%. You will notice there's no call to actions on here, but technically your call to action are the posts. So I'm expecting you to go and click on them. I have realized now that the colors over here are a little bit too faded. So I'm going to go and modify that. And again, this is the beauty about using a loop grid. Let's go with a 0.5 and then we're just going to hit update and you can now see the colors have come through and it washes out bits of the green and reds and stuff like that. We're going to now just do another container and we're going to duplicate the second one. I'm now going to pop it down over here. We're going to rename that to be fourth seat. In fact, I didn't check how this looks on the mobile. I'll come back onto that. Okay, we'll get onto that. Let's just finish this off and we'll, we'll roll back a little bit. What we're going to do, though, is make this now be just a row of three. And again, we're going to use a bit of offset. I'm going to get rid of this container at the end. I'm going to go over to my second container that contains the loop grid. I'm now going to make this be, uh, I believe it is a 20. So what I'm doing is 540 plus 260 plus the 20 that you would have had the gap. So I'm accounting for all of that. So we've got a 260. I'm going to go to my loop grid and say have three columns only show three posts i'm then going to go down to my query and i'm going to go to exclude and we already have one two three four five six so i'm going to say offset by six and when you do that you will now have three of the last posts gonna have nine in total i'm going to change that to be 216 it's instantly shrunken down and i'm just going to very quickly change the image so let's now go and check how everything looks on the mobile. So let's just go in because I know this third container we didn't adjust yet, but let's just check from the top. Everything's looking fine. That's a responsibly hidden image. We're okay. I mean, I'm going to say that does not need to be that big. I mean, and I would probably argue make that be a 260 like that. Just shrink it down. 
You scroll down, you scroll down, everything's looking okay, except when we get here. I'm gonna go over to the container and I'm now gonna edit the template. Uh, make sure you hit save if it ever warns you to do that because you don't wanna lose everything. At the moment, it is going over to the end or it might be on the center. And again, the problem can occur where let's say it was like, uh, it was over there at the moment and you start doing all of this and it doesn't kind of move it to where you want. And it is annoying, but you will get used to it, is what you wanna do is go and click the start and it moves it over. We do have the problem though that the words are carrying over, but you kind of have to accept that unless your titles are a very prescriptive short length, this will happen. What I will say though is that the distance in terms of the loop of 20 or 10 whatever we set is not enough now. So I'm gonna go and hit save and back, then I'm going to click on the loop grid, go over to my style, and I'm going to say, let's increase that to be 20. So that's looking a little bit better. However, we do have a bit of a problem over here with the bottom. So let's go over to our container. And I'm going to say, give me about 40 from the bottom there. So we have a little bit of breathing space. And when we get to the desktop, that might be something you might want to add down here as well. I think that's a really cool, unique layout that we've gone and created. And I hope that's gone and give you some ideas for layouts. Like, I mean, look, it's like a hero banner and blogs. And then we got image. Websites don't always have to be just the standard hero banner. They don't even have to be, oh, here's our blog post. And you get a grid of three or four or six. You can interchange and mix things around a bit and be a little bit creative. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life, I never miss that.